Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Simply Structure. In this video, I will explain you how to design a column carrying an axial load and a uniaxial bending moment. So let's say I want to design a column of size 300 mm by 500 mm and the grade of the concrete is M25 and I am assuming Fe415 grade steel and let's say the clear cover to the main reinforcement is 40 mm. So now in the case of the columns we generally have 6 layers of reinforcement as shown is in this figure. So in the first layer I am assuming that there are 3 bars, in the second layer I am assuming 2 bars, in the third and the fourth layer I am assuming 0 bars, in the fifth layer I am assuming 2 bars and in the sixth layer I am assuming 3 bars. So let's say the diameter of the bar in the first layer is 25 mm, in the second layer it is 20 mm, in the fifth layer it is 20 and in the sixth layer it is 25 mm. Now I will calculate the area of the ste steel in each layer. So in the first layer the area of the steel will be given by the number of bars in the first layer multiplied by the area of each bar. So area of each bar is pi by 4 into d square. So it will be equal to pi into diameter of bar square and dividing it by 4. So now what I will do is I will not calculate individually area of all the layers that is again I will have to do 2 times of pi by 4 into 20 square. So instead of that what I will do is click on this cell at the corner of this cell you will get this plus sign. So click on that and drag up to the 6th layer. So Excel will automatically calculate the area of all the layers. Now I need to calculate the distances. So in the case of the first layer this it will be equal to the distance as this distance will be d1. So to, to calculate this distance d1 what I will do is I will have to add the, the clear cover that is 40 mm and the half of the bar die of the first layer. So that will be equal to half of 25 mm. Similarly if I want to calculate this distance d6 which is up to the which is from the top to the center of the sixth layer. So that will be equal to overall uh, this overall dimension that is capital D and minus clear cover minus half of the die of sixth layer. Now if I, if I want to calculate this distance D2 which is up to the center of the second layer what I will do is it is equal to the distance D1 plus half of the bar of first layer plus in between the first and the second layer the clear spacing between the first and the second layer will be equal to maximum of the dia of both the layers so your maximum of 25 mm and 20 mm so the clear spacing between the first and the second layer is 25 mm and again it is up to the center of the second layer so i will again add half of the diameter of the bar of the second layer. Similarly if I want to calculate the effective depth, uh, uh, if I want to calculate this distance d5, so what I will do is from the distance d6 I will subtract the die of bar of the sixth layer and I will subtract the maximum of die of these two layers that is fifth and the sixth layer because my clear spacing is here maximum of 25 mm and 20 mm that is 25 mm and again I will subtract half of the die of the bar of the fifth layer. And in the third and the fourth layer there will be no distance because there are no bars in the third and the fourth layer. Now I will calculate this distance y. So the, the distance y is nothing but the distance of the layers from the center line of the section. So for example in the first layer my distance will be equal to the overall depth uh, this bigger dimension divided by 2 and minus the distance d1. 
so i will get the distance of the first layer from the center line so now in the case of the second layer what i will do again i will uh, subtract overall uh, this bigger dimension that is d by 2 and the minus the d2 so what i will do is here in this case the o, the bigger dimension that is d in all the layer is fixed that is in the third layer fourth layer or sixth layer the overall depth is remaining uh, this bigger dimension is remaining the same so here i will use absolute self referencing so after you so what i will do is we know that is nothing but this bigger dimension divided by 2 minus this d1 distance so after clicking on this 500 mm you need to press f4 in the keyboard so what that will do is it will create the absolute cell referencing so why are we using the absolute cell referencing because my bigger dimension is not changing in all the layers so now i if i click on this cell and if i drag it to the bottom the excel will automatically calculate the y for all the layers so in the second layer my d is remaining fixed while my small d is changing so here small d is in this case it is 100 mm if i see in this case it is 400 mm while my the first cell that is capital d by 2 so in this case the capital d is remaining fixed because i have used here absolute cell referencing so now i will calculate the total ast that is equal to sum of area of steel of all the layers so that is 4 to 0 1.88 mm square and now i will calculate the percentage of reinforcement that is the percentage of reinforcement is given by ast multiplied by 100 divided by b into d so my percentage of reinforcement is 2.801 percent so it is less than 4 percent so in the case of columns my maximum percent uh, re reinforcement percentage of reinforcement should not exceed 4 percent so it is okay now from the analysis from any software like etabs or stat pro i came to know that i am having 10 columns and the first column is carrying an axial load of 234.35 kN and a moment of 200.1 kN meter the unsupported length of the column c1 is 3 meter and similarly i have other 9 columns and i need to design all these 10 columns so first of all i will calculate the moment due to minimum eccentricity so the moment due to minimum eccentricity is given by the load multiplied by the minimum eccentricity so in this case the load on the column c1 is 234.35 and multiplied by minimum eccentricity so minimum eccentricity we know that is equal to maximum of unsupported length of the column by 500 plus least lateral dimension by 30 so your least lateral dimension is 300 and here the least lateral dimension is remaining fixed so i will again use absolute cell referencing and divide by 30 and subject it to a minimum eccentricity of 20 mm so comma 20 i will close the bracket and this eccentricity will come out to be in mm so i am i am dividing it by 10 to the power so here the moment due to ascent minimum eccentricity is 4.69 so now i will click on this cell and after i see the plus value i will click and drag it to the bottom so i will so excel will automatically calculate moment due to minimum eccentricity for all the 10 columns now i will calculate the design bending moment so here the design moment will be equal to maximum of the applied moment and the moment due to minimum eccentricity and again i will here drag it so now we have designed all the 10 columns and now our next step is to check all these 10 columns so whether these 10 columns are safe or not so in order to check all these 10 columns we need to prepare the interaction curves so here we will prepare the interaction curves and for that we need to perform all these calculations 
so that we will see in our next video that's all guys if you like the content then please subscribe to my channel thanks for watching bye for now